Tim Burchett says the Pentagon is lying about UFOs and a whole lot more. It's time for another UFO news roundup. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, here's Tim. On UAPs. Congressman, do you feel that the Pentagon is lying? Yeah, they're lying. They, um, look, since 1947, they've told us these things don't exist. And yet they spend tens of millions of dollars on these things, on studying something, yet they won't release the reports. They're redacted. They look like somebody shot them with a 12-gauge shotgun. Look, I'm, I'm, and there's there's the, the famous um, uh, Tic Tac videos that were filmed by, by some very brave pilots, American pilots, uh, military pilots. Then they say that that does not exist. Look, I'm not about, I don't, you know, I don't care about the flying saucers, the little green men. I've got my own opinion about that. I just want transparency. Why are we spending tens of millions of dollars on these things? And why do we trust a Pentagon that has failed every audit, that has, um, has lost over a half a trillion dollars in assets, allegedly? And then how do we punish them this last NDAA, a, a bipartisan bill? We gave them 20 billion new dollars. They're an arrogant bunch. They lie. It's about money. It's about power. It's all the things that run Washington. And, and we know it over half the American public public believes there's something else out there and I there is absolutely something else out there and tim knows it and we know it and they know that we know uh or at least some of us uh clearly they're able to get away with lying uh, a lot of media you know ran with the lie unfortunately there are handpicked uh, journalists and media outlets that uh, ran with the propaganda that from the Arrow report that there were no UFOs. Nothing to see here, folks. Uh, so there's uh, still far too many people that are willing to believe the lie. We need to wake people up. Uh, you know, uh, we, we need some real evidence to come forward to shake people loose uh, of their cognitive dissonance. Hopefully that will be forthcoming. We've got field hearings. We have uh, apparently more UFO hearings in Congress. Uh, and we are going to get some of David Grush's whistleblowers, his 40 plus whistleblowers, to come forward uh, this year, seemingly, seemingly. Uh, but, you know, those will, you know, again, just be more whistleblowers. Uh, we need evidence. Now, uh, these are theoretically uh, people that are participants in the UFO crash retrieval and reverse engineering programs. First-hand uh, direct uh, participants and witnesses. Uh, so hopefully their testimony will carry even more weight than David Grush uh, with the American uh, public and the, the people of the world. So we'll see. We will see, uh, but we do need some physical evidence. We really do. You know, we need some pictures. We need some videos at the very least, but that can be faked. Uh, you know, we really need some hard stuff. We need some real UFOs, guys. We need we need some, we need some flying saucers and little green men. With all due respect to Temper Chet, obviously they don't need to be green. They generally, genuine, generally, generally, I can say that word, generally aren't green. Uh, but okay, moving on. Here's what Ross Coulthard had to say. If it's a WUSAP, if, if one of these programs is protected in some way by a special access program that's tied up with a bow to be super, super secret, you are, as the head of that defense aerospace company or its corporate counsel or whoever it was that was questioned, you are legally obliged to avoid answering the question and, if necessary, to lie to conceal the existence of that program. So yeah, now that is really key. If you are read into these programs, you are obliged uh, to lie about it. And uh, he uses this to say that, you know, if Sean Kirkpatrick went to Lucky Martin and said, hey, is there a UFO in your basement? You know, and they would lie and say no. And of course he would believe it uh, or at least report that he believed it. But I would go one step further than that because Sean Kirkpatrick, uh, from what I am seeing, is clearly a direct agent of the control group. He's not just a bureaucrat in a bad position uh, or somebody that doesn't believe in this stuff. Uh, he is a you know spreading deliberate disinformation on behest of the UFO control group. So he is obliged to lie about it because he is 
almost certainly read into these programs. Uh, why else would he have at least two members of the uh, control group and on a secret advisory board? Uh, why would he be connected to companies that are associated with reverse engineering UFO technology? Uh, you know, he has a history in science and intelligence. Uh, you know, a perfect candidate for somebody to be read into the program. And here he is, uh, the former director of the Pentagon's UFO program. Uh, what are the odds that he's not read into the program? But Ross is nice and he's not actually accusing uh, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick of being a tool of the control group. But I'm not that nice and I will go there. Uh, okay, check this out. Speaking of Tic Tacs, we have a very interesting Tic Tac-y object over here. Check it out. This is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of people are still thinking these are Lockheed Martin. Uh, you know, I, I'm 100% sure that Lockheed Martin has UFOs. Do they have Tic Tacs or Tic Tac-like objects? A, possibly. But, you know, as someone pointed out the other day, we've been seeing Tic Tacs since at least the 50s. Uh, when they have, when they, they didn't describe them as Tic Tacs back then, but as butane tank like objects, uh, which is exactly describing the Tic Tac. Uh, so yeah, this is not Lockheed Martin unless they've had these things since the fifties or hell if time travel is a thing, I guess they could be, uh, Lockheed Martin. That's why I hate the idea of time travel. If time travel is a possibility, and if the control group has access to time travel technology, it's so impossible to tell what the hell is going on. Ah, hate it. Hate it. But it does come up again and again in the research. It is It is possible. It is possible. It is annoying. Anyway, a great capture of a Tic Tac, and it's got the little appendages on there, as the Tic Tac is said to have had. Uh, so really, really cool. Great capture. Great capture. Uh, meanwhile, check this out. This is really interesting. You know, I, I love to show evidences of what I think of as Atlantis. Uh, you know, in one of the, you know, historically, I'd always thought some of the best evidence was um, the, the repeated, uh, you know, um, uh, images uh, over the world, throughout the world of, of, you know, various religious imagery and esoteric imagery, if you will, uh, that seems to be repeated in different cultures globally. Uh, you know, for example, uh, this great, you know, uh, thing right here, uh, India, Russia, and Mexico, all having this, this very similar imagery, right? Very intriguing. And then in Mesopotamia and in India and in Egypt, you have what might be a constellation there, a very specific uh, a set of images or a very specific image repeated uh, in those cultures. So, you know, what does that mean? Is that evidence of Atlantis? Well, I used to think that was pretty good evidence of Atlantis, but in light of the Nazca mummies uh, and the evidence of elongated skull beings uh, possibly having a global imprint, it's and also with the Nazca mummies, it's important to uh, highlight that uh, artwork of the human peoples of the times depict them uh, globally as well. They they were depicted tridactyl beings that looked a lot like the Nazca mummies were depicted uh, all over the world, and I've shown those videos and you know the, those pictures of those images. Um, so you know it's it's clear that non-humans or at least not 100% human, were interacting with humans of different cultures all over the world uh, throughout history, or at least parts of history. So could they have been the ones that inspired such imagery? May it not be a sign of Atlantis or some global civilization, uh, but actually signs of non-human interaction. So, you know, possible. Now, there, there, there are overt signs of Atlantis or at least some uh, global civilization or glo uh, some, you know, globe-spanning civilization or connections between uh, disparate parts of the world. Uh, you know, for example, uh, tobacco found in Egyptian mummies. Uh, you know, they didn't 
they didn't have tobacco. That's a South American thing. So, you know, they're, they're getting tobacco from somewhere. So there is a clear connection, uh, interaction between South America and ancient Egypt. Uh, and there's, there's other proofs as well of some sort of human, uh, you know, civilization that was able to uh, have this global imprint. Uh, so I, I don't know what to make of this imagery, whether that's more human or Atlantean or more alien, but let me know what you think in the comments below. All right. Meanwhile, check it out. Yeah. I reported on, uh, the weird anomalous, uh, structure, uh, uh, underwater that has been vanished by Google. Well, apparently it's not the only thing underwater that Google is vanishing. Check this out. Uh, think tank, speaking of Google deleting things, here is a four kilometer wide object making tracks along the ocean floor. It's been blurred out now. Yeah, check it out. So this is what it did look like. Apparently that's a four kilometer long object, this round object. And you can see it, you know, the tracks uh, that Think Tank is talking about. And this is what it looks like now on Google. They are erasing this thing. Now, I mean, if, if they, it, it, you know, it's the, it's the Streisand effect, right? You know, it's, it's kind of funny because if they hadn't deleted it, I would be inclined to think it was a big, big rock or something. I mean, four kilometers is a big rock, but you could invent some mundane reason for it, right? Some big rock sliding across the ocean floor slowly, right? Uh, you know, the uh, underwater alien base structure with the columns. You could say, you know, maybe there's some natural cause for that. But then they go and they delete it. Uh, you, why would they delete it if, if it wasn't anomalous, right? They're hiding something. They're hiding something. There's, there's the total Streisand effect. If you don't know what that is, uh, look it up. You know, but that's totally what it is. Uh, you know, so there, there seems to be some there there. Otherwise, why would they cover it up? And what is this four kilometer wide object? Uh, is that, is that a spaceship? Is that a mobile, uh, underwater base? What the hell is that thing? I don't know, but I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, dragons are buzzing, uh, uh seemingly a, a dragon buzzed the, the, really space, the SpaceX launch. Check it out. Views. We've never seen anything like the views. We've never seen views. We've Never seen yeah, yeah, that is a uh, dragon. And if you don't know what a dragon is, the dragon UFOs or UAPs, that's what Dr. Robert Shape calls the tiny UFOs, or seemingly tiny. We, I don't, I guess we don't know exactly how big they are. Uh, that love to buzz airborne objects, and you know that is very possibly one right there buzzing this rocket. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a pretty good capture of a dragon right there. And uh, yeah, here's here's a, another cool uh, dragon because uh, sometimes dragons have wings. And here's actually a really good um, uh, interpolation of a dragon. That's one single object interpolated so that you can see its movement because they go so fast. And you can clearly see the wings or wing-like structures of this object. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, this was a really great capture. What the hell are those wings? Uh, Robert thinks they're plasma jets. Uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense for them to be actual wings, but they, they move like wings do. Uh, so, you know, wings, actual wings don't make any sense. Uh, plasma jets make a lot more sense. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what they are. I don't know what these uh, crazy appendages are. But, you know, they, they are, these are not bugs or birds. They will go behind distant objects, as I've shown repeatedly. And uh, you, they'll go behind a distant plane and they will have wings. So what are these things? What are these things? I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, yeah, and check this out. This is really interesting. So you might be familiar with the Jonathan Reed story. I'm not going to go through it all right now, uh, but you know, a guy found an alien and uh, it was, it was critically wounded and it, uh, he brought it back and uh, to his place and was putting it out, putting it in storage and it let out a terrifying noise. 
and um, yeah, and anyway, it's it, it's, a, it's a more involved story than that, and including with him uh, uh, teleporting off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it sounds so bogus. It sounds so bogus. It really does. Uh, yeah, here, here if you if you're not familiar with it, let me see if there is that. Uh, yeah, here here he is teleporting off. Okay, here we go. Then it starts to be activated by uh, uh, there. Yeah, he's got he's got the alien technology and he's going to teleport. Uh, it's painful, but if I hold my chest, it has a tendency to be less painful. And then they make the decision. Uh, uh, yeah okay so you know i'd always thought that was probably bs right probably a bunch of bullshit uh but man the alien that he found looks so much like Sebastian. It really does. Uh, one of the the new Nazca mummies. I mean, it really does. The, the slant of the eyes, the shape of the head, uh, you know, the, the, the shape of the mouth. Uh, I mean, it really does look so much like that. It really, really shockingly does. Now, you know, the, 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 yeah, the appearance of the nose, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's kind of gross there, uh, you know, but it is what it is, uh, and this could, could be an actual being that tragically died. Uh, so, you know, with all due respect to that being, if that's what that was, um, does that mean that he actually did get an alien bracelet that allowed him to teleport somewhere with a big light show? I don't know, guys, I don't know. But it's a crazy story, and the uh, uh, the striking similarities between uh, that being uh, in and that being, it's it, it's interesting. It's interesting, guys. It, it is. It is. I I don't know what to make of it, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Last but not least, uh, the labyrinth of uh, Hawara at the the pyramid of Hawara. Well, we now know what it looks like. It's really cool, guys. This is awesome. Uh, this is what it might have looked like. Uh, this giant, super impressive uh, structure uh, that is also underground at the foot of this pyramid. It's huge. Uh, here is what Herodotus had to say about it. The Egyptians made a labyrinth which surpasses even the pyramids. It has 12 roofed courts with doors facing each other, six face north and six south, in two continuous lines, all within one outer wall. There are also double sets of chambers, 3,000 altogether, 1,500 above in the same number underground. We learn through conversation about the labyrinth's underground chambers. The Egyptian caretaker caretakers would by no means show them as they were they said the burial vaults of the kings who first built this labyrinth and of the sacred crocodiles the upper we saw for ourselves and they are creations greater than human the exits of the chambers and the mazy passages hither and thither through the courts were an unending marvel to us overall this is a roof made of stone like the walls and the walls are covered with cut figures, and every court is set around with pillars of white stone, very precisely fitted together. Near the corner where the labyrinth ends stands a pyramid 240 feet high on which great fig figures are cut. A passage to this has been made underground. Okay, so this is what it may have looked like. Um, unfortunately, the Romans looted it all. They used it as a quarry. It's all gone now. This fantastic above-ground structure. But new technologies, a, a satellite technology, I guess ground-penetrating ground radar or the like, has been able to 
penetrate the ground and map this amazing underground structure out for us. Uh, so look at this incredible labyrinth, this huge thing. I mean, that's the big old pyramid right there, Hawara. And this thing, it just goes all over. I mean, it is the imprint of it is much bigger than the pyramid, uh, like by several times. This is a massive, massive complex. Uh, and apparently there's some emperors or some pharaohs buried under there. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're not, not buried in the pyramid, interestingly. Uh, <laughs> right? What were those pyramids for? Um, so, um, yeah, just, I would love to be able to go in there. Why can't they excavate this? Uh, why can't we study this? Unfortunately, uh, it's probably all uh, underwater now. Um, the, the water table has apparently shifted and there's probably a lot of flooding. Uh, probably most of this is, is, is choked with water now. Uh, it would be such a shame to lose this to, you know, water erosion and, uh, and such. Uh, it would be nice if there were a way to go in there and pump out the water and at least get a, a scientist down there, an archaeologist down there to study and preserve it, uh, you, know, and, and, you know, before they have to let the water come back in. At least keep it pumped out enough uh, so we can preserve it, you know, records of it for posterity. Um, you know, it's, it's such a shame to think that all this is probably, um, you know, uh, uh, being destroyed by water now and may have already been destroyed to some extent. But clearly you can see that it's, it's mappable. The, the satellite can still map it. So these uh, chambers and these halls and corridors still seem to exist. So, you know, yeah, it might be salvageable to some extent. Um, so uh, why aren't they trying to do anything about this? Now, that would clearly be a massive undertaking if indeed this is flooded, um, you know, to, to, to pump that water out. I can't imagine the scale of the project that that would be. Uh, so it may not be possible in any way. Uh, but, you know, at least send some underwater submersible drones in there uh, to, to, to see what can be seen and, uh, you know, get some get some photos and some video of it and take samples of whatever they're able to do uh, before water completely destroys it. Either way, uh, just a, a really a, a fantastic thing that modern technology uh, has enabled. And, and thank you very much, Funny Old World, one of my favorite channels for bringing this to my attention. Uh, so, yeah, what do you think is down there? We've got sacred crocodiles. We've got pharaohs. We've got this crazy multi-level labyrinth. There's two levels to it. Uh, man, I would love to go down there. Oh, man, talk about Indiana Jones. Oh, that is so cool. That plus the Nazca mummy tombs. I mean, there's some serious Indiana Jones stuff in the world, guys. Uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, get get my whip ready and my pit my whip and my pistol ready and my fedora. I am on this, guys. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you think about this awesome labyrinth and everything else covered today in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Uh, smash the like button and the subscribe button uh, and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Discord links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support the Cosmic Road in a bigger way, uh, please grab some uh, merch or a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store. See the link below. Or if you're a science fiction or fantasy fan, you might enjoy my novels. That's the kind of book I write. Again, see the link below. Or you can become a channel member. Channel members are rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.